Welcome to Poets from the Neighborhood. My name is Louise Collin. And I'm Sandy Coomer. We hope you'll enjoy the poems we'll be reading today. Poems written by your friends and neighbors. I wrote the first poem, and it's called Morning. I leave you sleeping in the quiet. The timid sun hasn't yet reached the back porch and purple-gray mist circles the yard like castle walls. I wait for last night's anger to reappear, but it takes too much work to dig it out of memory. I let it sink into the recess of those things that can't be explained. Let it sit with the cool dawn that stills the flutter of what I both hope for and fear. I think if I, if I stay here and let the day form around me, I can be reborn with it. If we move slower, we can catch up with each other. If we're silent, we can hear the breath that brought us together years ago. We can hear the words we used to say spring out of the air that still holds them true. The Cave by Mary Lane. She lives in a limestone-lined cave with a warm floor like walking on silk, the high ceilings rounded off to reflect the shadow of the dragon that lies in a corner, hurling streams of fire across the entrance, daring her to wave her sword near its slaying tail or try to leave. Saturday Morning in Suburbia by Raymond L. Presson. Cardboard and poster board, yard sale signs at every intersection and subdivision entrance from here to the Murray County line. These are the driveways where we, the middle class, set up our flea markets and let total strangers rummage through our belongings. The discarded clothes, toys, strained furniture, books, music, and outdated lamps, the artwork, dishes and kitchen appliances, clock radios, brass decorative items, plaid throw pillows, VHS movies, and exercise equipment we couldn't live without and MasterCard said we didn't have to. Now other suburbanites, like homeless people, are going through our trash and asking, does this work? And how much will you take for this cutlery set when the homemade sticker with the price is right there on the dang thing? Because everybody wants to talk you down as if you should give a further discount for something that is already on your entire life's clearance rack. And you want to say, heck, just take it because you know she doesn't want it that bad, but she's addicted to mediocrity like everyone else. Like the lady there in the aqua warm-up suit, the one with board games in her arms, who said, I do, in the church, to a guy who didn't really, she didn't really have any use for, but he was a bargain, and she had a place for him next to the curio cabinet. Gorilla by Susie Margaret Ross. I see the grass pushing its way through the bricks in my driveway. How persistent is Mother Nature, insisting on making her presence known even in the most hostile environments. She does not hesitate in forcing her way to the sun. Like you, who came when my heart was cold, secure in its frozenness. You, who finding a crack sneaked your way in, bringing hope to the barren. Clockwork by Catherine Moore. Such an unformed woman, in need of an atomic rhythm. Each day rolled bright to dark without a stretch of sky or thought. The invisible now restrained. Timely as pollen pushes stem to elapse into color and wilt again. 
Freedom by Vera de R. from her book, Joy of Being. Oh, in shimmering self-made cage of streaming jealousy and scourging rage over possessiveness and growing greed, objects and material that steadily feed our ego. Poor souls, thus trapped, open the ugly cage, so warped out let pure souls free to be one with loving God Almighty. Thank you for watching Poets from the Neighborhood. We hope you join us again soon.